October 1943. Japanese forces in Thailand celebrate the completion of what would become known as the Death Railway. いや、傷いことはですけどね。うん。人を殺すいうことは絶対にしてはいけないなと思いました。はい。それだけ。They used to say, "Oh, you know, you Fancy you buying a Japanese car or buying a Japanese television or something like that. And I thought that was a load of nonsense because that didn't make any difference. I had the worst uh, nightmare 10 days ago. Now that's 70 odd years after. また犠牲が発生するとそのそういうことは考えが浮かばなかったんだ。A third of a million men were forced to work on the railway. Over 100,000 died. My original group was 1700 strong. By the time that uh, the railway was finished, uh, there were only 400 left. By 1941, the Second World War had been raging across Europe for several years and was not going the Allies' way. Setback followed setback. In the Far East, Germany's ally Japan attacked US forces at Pearl Harbor, invaded territories across the Pacific, and rapidly advanced towards Malaya and the impregnable British fortress of Singapore. Thousands of British and Australian troops were sent to defend the colony. For many, this was to be the defining moment of their lives. People ask me, how is it that you reach the age of 100? I said, so many times, I have just missed death. This has happened to me so often. And I said, it's so much of my life, it's been luck. I don't feel old, I don't want to feel old. But, uh, and I, I think it's preposterous when I suddenly you know, have a 93rd birthday, this is crazy. But, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just the life, it, it's full and rich and interesting, and, and I love it. You know, I'm I had never spoken about it, apart a bit with my family, but never really. There's a sort of certain point where you don't um, want to talk about it.今の経験を生かしながら余生を有意義に先ほど申し上げた通りの生活をして後世にその平和と命の大切を伝えたいと念願しております。The Japanese were, I suppose, only about 100k up 
the Malay Peninsula from Singapore. When we got there, they were dropping bombs on the docks. They killed a lot of people in the shipping and they came in and the docks were full of people trying to get away. It was absolutely tragic. We were the last ship in the convoy. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning uh, when we were going in there and uh, a flight of bombers come over, peeled off one at a time, come in bombers. We had got it several times. She started to burn like, and there was thick columns of black smoke coming along the deck. And uh, I said to my mate, Pack Radio, I'm, I'm going over the side. So I can leave him now. He's, we had crouched down by the cabins. And I walk, I get up on the rail, stand up on the rail. I said to him, come on, Pat, I'm going. It's the last I've seen of him. In this same dark, steaming tropical jungle, men of both the British and Imperial forces go through an intensive OCTU training course to fulfill the need for officers of the Malayan Defence Force. Using collapsible boats, they perfect themselves in the methods of jungle warfare. It was terribly British stuff, really. You know. Tremendously British, and, and uh, for a time when we should have been training, we didn't. And so we went really into, into war, not well trained at all. I mean, we were hardly trained. It was crazy. The jungle holds many a secret to counter any move directed against Singapore or Australia. Absolutely no preparation whatsoever had been done, even to clear a field of fire so that you could see what you were doing, because we just faced mangrove swamps. The Japanese. They had tanks, they had armored cars, but they also had bicycles, and those bicycles won their war. They came down Malaya like a, a wire through cheese. Thirty-six thousand Japanese soldiers closed in on Singapore. Facing them were almost 85,000 British and Allied troops. But the Japanese were motivated, experienced, and expert at jungle warfare. The Allies found themselves constantly outflanked and outfought. So we had this brief spell of, of fighting, and a certain amount of um, fairly close contact fighting, which is just, Horrific. We were actually under mortar fire, and the, the, my colonel literally lost his head. There's no question, I was always scared stiff um, uh, when one had shells landing near one. Despite fierce and stubborn fighting, the Japanese advance continued to close in on Singapore. Winston Churchill warned his generals that surrender was out of the question. We had heard rumors that the Japanese didn't take prisoners, like, you know, so we didn't know what was going to happen, like, you know. But um, it was a, a terrible, terrible reflection of the, um, the powers that be of ours that were running that show out there, like, you know. It should never have happened. February the 15th, 1942, and the unthinkable did happen the British commander, General Percival, surrendered Singapore to the Japanese. The white flag went up at uh, about four o'clock on the Sunday. Churchill would later describe this as the worst moment of the war. The extraordinary thing is that uh, the Japs, of course, were completely amazed at having captured so many prisoners. In all, 130,000 men were captured during this short campaign. To add to the humiliation of defeat, they were forced to watch the victorious Japanese generals drive by. The Allied prisoners were marched up to the northern tip of Singapore, to the military base, Changi. We learned that, the, uh, that everyone was going out to this Changi area and they marched out, it's 18 miles. People say, you know, what's it like being taken a prisoner of war? Chaos, the, the, the fall of Singapore in every way, and no law and things. 
And when things began to break down, which they did very quickly, um, malaria started. And then people got dysentery. The Japs, as part of this, they literally brought out lorry loads of barbed wire, which they then told us to put up around a certain perimeter. And that was the first time we were actually, you could say, we were in a prison camp. You, you have to, you learn Japanese or pseudo-Japanese and I can still swear in Japanese, but I've forgotten all my Japanese. They would point to your shoes and say, Nemoga, meaning, what, what is the name of it? And so you would say, shit, you see. And so they would go around pointing at other people's good boots, pointing and saying, oh, you got, you number one shit guy. I mean, you had a very good pair of boots. And, and it was hilarious because we had a lot of fun for about two weeks. And then they suddenly got the message to an interpreter, and then, and then we had to learn uh, Japanese orders. The Imperial Army had a very tight grip on Japanese society. They'd been fighting a war in the Far East since the mid-1930s, and were the driving force behind Japan's territorial ambitions. All young men were conscripted at 21 into a tough and brutal training program. え、大したいと思っておりませんけれども、国の定めであって兵役の義務でいかなくてはいけない務めであったから行きました。いや、なりませんよ。大変辛かったです。一時、あの、私の戦友もおりましたけれども、おい、死の会を人も出てきておりました。訓練の厳しさに耐えかねて、はい。夜寝台に潜るとき、ベッドに潜るときには涙が自然と流れてくるような日々が続きましたけど、それも強い兵隊を作るための基礎教育だと思って我慢頑張りました。the Japanese advance had continued across the Pacific and up into Burma towards India. With an urgent need to move supplies, the solution was to dust off an old British plan to build a railway. The railway itself was only about 415 kilometers long. Well, that, that's not an enormous distance at all to, to link it up with, with Rangoon. So they could bring people to Saigon, cross to Bangkok, and then take them on the railway right up through to the Burmese frontier. So really, the railway was not a long railway in, in those, those terms, but it was the most hellish condition to make it. The Japanese realized they had a vast pool of potential labor in the prisoners at Changi. Things always change in these camps, and. Uh... About seven months later, I was called to the orderly office and told I was put on a draft to go to a holiday camp. There was about 600 of us that were selected and um, we were taken down to Singapore and loaded on the trucks. And then we had a train journey to Thailand from Singapore there were 32 in my own particular truck, and uh, that meant that only a certain small percentage could actually sit down at any one time. And you had all your kit was stuck in the centre. 